Hello, I'm Jason with scienceandmath.com, and today we're going to do a really neat experiment. We're going to learn how to make a cloud uh, inside of a two liter bottle of soda. Uh, it's really actually very impressive. It only takes a few, uh, a few materials that you can usually find from around the house, and it's a really great way to uh, understand how clouds form and all of the things involved uh, in cloud formation. Now all you're going to need for this experiment is some rubbing alcohol. This is regular old rubbing alcohol that you can find from the drugstore. Uh, some duct tape, you'll just need a little bit of it. You'll need an empty two liter bottle of soda that you've washed out and cleaned out. And you need some kind of bicycle pump. Now this particular bicycle pump is really big and bulky. If you have a smaller one, even one that might be used just to air up you know, basketballs or something, it usually will work just fine. So you need some kind of pump to do this experiment. Okay, the first thing you want to do is make sure you get permission from an adult to do this experiment because we are using alcohol, uh, household alcohol, uh, so it's a chemical. We want to make sure we're asking for permission. We also want to make sure and use our safety goggles, so let's go ahead and put those on, our safety glasses. Um, now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to open our two liter bottle of soda and we're going to pour just a little bit of the alcohol inside. Now, how much doesn't really matter, but probably a couple teaspoons something on the order of a couple teaspoons. So let's go ahead and shut that off. We'll put the uh, alcohol off to the side. And what I like to do is kind of close off the top after we've got the alcohol in there and just sort of rotate it around like this. And what you're doing is you're coating the inside of this plastic container with this alcohol. And also, if you've ever uh, played with alcohol, you know that it kind of feels cold when you pour it on your skin. That's because the alcohol is evaporating. So what's happening inside of here is the alcohol is coating the inside of this container. It's also evaporating. So inside of the uh, bottle here in the air uh, is a little bits of, of alcohol uh, molecules that are kind of going into, into uh, into a gas, basically. So they're kind of filling the air up in here with this alcohol molecules. And that's really important also for this. So we'll, we'll explain why that's important in a little bit. Now, ultimately, what we want to do is we want to take our bicycle pump and we want to be able to force air inside of this uh, container. Now, you're going to have a different bicycle pump than the one I have. Mine has sort of like this, this uh, plug at the end of it here that's almost the right size. Uh, it's almost the right size to fit in there, but not quite. So what I'm going to do to help me force air in there is I'm going to use a little bit of duct tape to sort of seal it up. Now yours is going to look a little bit different. Some of you might have a, a needle valve for like a, a basketball or something. In that case, I'd probably put a cork in the top, like a, a wine cork in here, and then force the, the needle through the cork to try to get a nice seal. You might have to play with that part of it to get exactly what you're looking for, but the ultimately all you're trying to do is, is have some kind of a nice seal, a temp temporary seal. It doesn't have to be a, a crazy permanent seal, just some sort of temporary seal uh, so that you can force this air, because we're going to use the, the air pump here to push a lot of air in here. So what we're going to do is just take our duct tape, for my, for my particular pump anyway, and I'm just going to sort of go around here. It doesn't have to be perfect. We just want to get it nice uh, like this. And obviously we've covered it, so we want to be able to get the air in there. So I want to put a hole right in the middle. I'm using a, a screwdriver bit to do that. You could use you know, a pencil or a pen or something just to kind of get the hole in there. All right, so now we have duct tape there that's going to hopefully help us seal this container. And then we have a bicycle pump. And then what we're going to do is basically hold it. I'm going to hold it there with my hands while I force air and while I uh, manually pump it up. And then when we release the pressure, when I move my hand away, the air pressure inside that we've pushed in there is going to quickly escape through this hole. And if we've done it right, we're going to make not only a cloud in here, but a really nice cloud. Now, before we actually do it, I'm going to go and put a different color uh, material, a different color uh, washcloth down underneath it, and that's going to help you see the cloud form a little bit better. All right, so now we're ready to go. I have a nice orange washcloth where we can see the clear bottle over it. We've got our alcohol inside. We've got our nice plug and our air pump that we're going to use to pump air inside. Now, you'll have to jockey this different ways for yourself depending on the kind of pump you have. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stand right over here and kind of with my left hand, I'm going to force this air pump against my duct tape here. And with my right hand, I'm gonna grab the bicycle pump and just force air. How much air do you need in there? You just need to play around with it. Just kind of give it a good nice five or six pumps and really hold it on there 
when you let go is when you'll see the cloud form. So here we go. I'm gonna start pumping. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Okay, one, two, three, let go. And look at what we have there. A very, very impressive cloud. Now what we have here, what you're seeing here, is the water vapor inside the air that was inside of this bottle quickly condense into basically a cloud. That's what clouds are. They are water vapor that have come together and formed these masses that we can see in the sky. And they've condensed, basically, into little droplets that then form together. So notice we still have the cloud in there. Before it goes away completely, oh, look at this. I actually split my duct tape here. So we'll fix that. I want to show you what happens whenever we put more pressure back inside of it. So let me go ahead and quickly create a new duct tape plug. Put that here. Put it right on, on top. And then put a hole. There. Now look what happens. You can still sort of see the cloud. Watch what happens when I pump it back up. Notice the cloud disappears. When I put pressure back into it, the cloud disappears. And then when I release the pressure, I've got another cloud form. Now, when we do these experiments, we really need to take a minute to try to understand what is going on here and why it works. All right, so how do clouds form is the first thing you have to ask yourself. Forget about what we did here. Clouds form in uh, nature because we have a body of water. The sun hits it, the water evaporates, it goes into the sky, and when enough water makes it into the sky, they kind of come together and form masses of water vapor in the sky that have kind of condensed into little droplets, right? And those droplets, when they get big enough, they fall back to the earth as rain. So it's sort of like the cycle. The water comes down as rain, evaporation, brings them back up to the sky, then they collect together, and then they fall down. But one thing that you may or may not have known is that whenever they make it back up into the sky, the higher you go in the atmosphere, the colder it gets. Right? So the higher you go, you go to 1,000 feet, 2,000 feet, 10,000 feet, the higher you go, the colder it is. And in order to make water turn from vapor back to liquid to condense it, you need to cool it off, right? That's something that we learn about uh, when we talk about evaporation and condensation. And that's how rain clouds form. The water goes up, it gets cold up there, it condenses out into these droplets, and then they fall back down. And that's happening because it gets colder the higher that we go into the atmosphere. So being colder or cooling the water off, the water vapor off, is kind of important to make clouds, right? Now the other thing that you may not have known is that there's dust in the Earth's atmosphere all over the place. You go up in an airplane, you go walk outside, you can't see it, but there's always dust. Always, always. And these clouds really love to form where there's dust. So when these droplets form in the atmosphere to make the clouds, they really like to form around dust particles that are just floating around in the air. So if you can, if you can find a place that has a nice bit of dust, invisible dust, but dust that's in the air, and you have all this water there that's cooling off, then you're going to get a nice big thundercloud uh, really ready to, to rain because it really makes the water have an easy job of condensing if they have some kind of like dust particle or something to kind of form on. And that's, that's important as well. So the dust particles that we're talking about to make clouds easier to form, in our experiment, the alcohol takes the place of the dust particle. What we did is we put the alcohol, you can still see the alcohol in there. We put the alcohol in there because we know alcohol is going to evaporate really quickly. So we put the alcohol in here, we swirl it around the bottle, and eventually that alcohol starts to, to go into gas, to evaporate inside or to, to go into vapor inside of this bottle. So inside this bottle, is three things, basically, at this point, when I cap it off. There's air in there. When, I'm, when I say air, I mean oxygen, nitrogen, the things that are in the air. There's water vapor, because there's always water vapor in the air, and no matter where you are. So there's water droplet, tiny, tiny, invisible water molecules in the air, we call water vapor. And now we've also put these alcohol molecules, which are in the air as well. They're gonna act like our seed particles, which are basically kinda like our dust, right? Okay, so that's what we did. Then we built this little duct tape thing just to be able to help us pump the air in there. And so what we did is we put 
this guy on the front of it. We held it on really tight with one arm while we pumped air in. Now let me ask you a question. What do you think happens when you pump air inside of a closed container? You keep pushing air in, pushing air in, and pushing air in, and pushing air in, and pushing air in. Pushing air in. Well, the pressure is going to increase, that's true. In fact, you can feel that when you use the bicycle pump, when you start pushing it, when you start doing it a few times, like pumping up a tire, it gets harder and harder to push that air in, right? But also, on top of being harder to push, you actually are slightly increasing the temperature of everything inside of here, of the air inside of here. You're raising the temperature a little bit when you force a lot of air in there. And that kind of makes sense because all air is made of molecules, right? So if you put this on there and start forcing a lot of air in there, you're forcing these air molecules to hit each other. You're cramming them in, you're cramming them in, and you're, you're kind of forcing them in there. Think about it in an elevator. You've got 25 people on an elevator. They're kind of bumping into each other, and it gets a little warm, right? Same thing with the air in here. So you're making it a little tiny bit warmer by cramming all this air in here, right? Now, at the moment you're ready to release it, you pull the tip off and immediately all of that air that was in there, not all of it, but a lot of the air in there, immediately leaves through this hole, right? And as soon as it leaves, uh, it basically cools off very, very quickly all of the air that's inside of this container. So one thing you may or may not have known is that any time you have a pressure in a container and you release that pressure quickly, it's going to cool off the remaining uh, air that's inside that container very, very quickly. So we have high pressure. We made it a little bit warmer by pushing that air in there. We pop the end off. Immediately it escapes. All the molecules start to fly apart from each other and immediately cool down. And so we have uh, all three things needed for a cloud. We have water vapor in there because we had air in there. We had the alcohol in there, which was kind of like the seed particles, to, like almost like the dust particles to help the clouds sort of have something to latch onto and form. And then we immediately cooled off the container. Instead of putting it in the freezer, we immediately released the pressure that cooled off all of the gas in the container and you had that really nice impressive cloud that formed. And this should also help explain why when we put the um, bike pump back on, on the front of it and we pumped it back up with air. We, in other words, when we saw the cloud in there and then we pumped it with air again, the cloud slowly, dis, uh, the cloud slowly dis disappeared because as soon as we start forcing air back in there, we're slowly increasing the temperature very slightly of everything in here. Um, and then the water molecules, they go back into vapor. So the cloud disappears again. And then when you release the pressure, we lower the temperature again and so on. In fact, you can't really figure this out until you do this for yourself, but whenever you actually pump it up and you release the pressure, what comes out of the, of the front, like the cloud, if you kind of squeeze it and let the cloud come out, it's kind of cool. It's, it feels a little bit cool. So we learned a lot in this section. We learned a tremendous amount in this section. We learned uh, what a cloud is, how they form, we learned that we need to cool the water vapor off. We learned that we need to have some sort of dust or, in this case, alcohol or something for the water uh, vapor to kind of latch onto and to kind of condense onto. And we learned that we need uh, to, to basically have a cooling process in order to make the cloud form. And we did all of these three things in this bottle here quickly. Uh, by releasing the pressure quickly, we lowered the temperature so much that the cloud instantly formed, and you can keep pumping it up and releasing the pressure over and over again and see this for yourself. Now, the only thing tricky in this experiment is figuring out usually a way to get your bike pump to actually fit on here. I did mine with duct tape. Um, you can get a cork and a needle valve. That sometimes works. Um, and you might just have to kind of go to the hardware store and find a good way to connect your, your particular pump to it. But it's a very interesting experiment because everybody has a two liter bottle somewhere. Most people have a bike pump sitting around the garage and most people have rubbing alcohol and that's really all that's needed to do this experiment. But do make sure that you wear your safety glasses while you're pumping it up because anytime you have pressure, you're pushing pressure into something, you wanna make sure and have your safety glasses on uh, at, during the times that you're actually pumping up uh, your pressure. So go grab the materials, grab an adult, and go do this experiment. And you know, it's very impressive the first time you do it. So have fun with it and go learn about how clouds form.